youth here so that they can learn about all of the, the, the various, the, the diversity of the Arab American community and all of our heritage. It's, very, it's a great resource and we have it here. It's a national museum. Bringing youth here is very um, important. So let me just end then um, by saying that, you know, youth is a period in the life course that's extremely sensitive um, to the context in which they find themselves. It's the time where they really start to develop a sense of self and an identity. It sets the foundation for their future. Elders in our community have a great role to play, a great role to play in terms of helping them to develop a strong sense of self, a strong cultural identity, but at the same time urging them, I would go so far as to say demanding that they have regular interactions with other cultures, that they move outside into the world and get to know people and let people get to know them so that they can take advantage of the positive opportunities that may come their way. Thank you very much. If, if we have we have room for a few questions, if you have any a question or comment. No question. Okay, I'm going to share a question. Thank you, Dr. Ajush. This is very very helpful and uh, insightful and, and uh, informative, of course. Um, I couldn't help uh, recently. I sort of observe our youth like you do. I raised kids like you did, and they're 17 and 18 now. And you see what they go through in school. Uh, it seems like there is a disconnect. I don't know, I wonder what you think about that. So in the introduction, we, uh, uh, our colleague told us about, you know, uh, uh, that neglecting the language has a cost. It comes at a high price. So the language became a, like this benchmark for who and what an Arab is. Although life is complex, and as you mentioned, we come from 22 different Arab countries, and some colleagues elsewhere argued that Lebanese and Palestinians don't speak the same language, etc., etc., which is, frankly, is not very helpful. Yet, right now, there's a, a protest in Detroit, uh, mostly young people, and if you go there, you'll find that among the organizers, in fact, there are Lebanese uh, youth, there are Palestinians, and among the ones present, you'll find Yemenis, Iraqis, you name it, are there. So we sort of uh, lost our way in terms of where the Arab is in, in the Arab American. So if we, uh, in Dearborn, of course, numbers give you a little bit of cover. If you raise your kids in, in Ann Arbor, you might feel like you're in Tel Aviv sometimes. Uh, so that distance which you, uh, so it was presented in the beginning of your talk, uh, the uh, social distance yeah. uh, can be extended or narrowed depending on how one identifies oneself. Yet, the Arab American per se has dif different definitions based on what I tried to say. I don't know if it makes yeah. any sense. So, so the amount of Arabness in Arab American, do you see that variation? So, so, you know, uh, like a curveball for scholars to kind of wrap their heads around identity per se. Yeah. Um, I, I think what I hear you say, let me, let, me, let me just make sure that I understand. I think what you're pointing to is that the, the ways in which Arab Americans may identify isn't necessarily as Arab. That they have nationalities that maybe are, are more salient for them, or maybe their religious identity is more salient, it's not necessarily the Arab identity? Is, is that what you mean? Well, that's what the scholar seems to think, whereas the youth look at Arab and Arabness, and some of us who pay attention to the language think that the language is the most important. So where does the common ground of all of this? Yeah, I mean, I mean this is a great question. I mean, he, Henning is, is uh, pointing to the fact that there's, um, one of the biggest challenges in the field for those of us who study Arab Americans is that it's very hard to come to an agreed upon definition of what is an Arab American. 
and what defines one as being an Arab American. And that's why I, I, was, I was very careful at the beginning to say, well, I'm talking about Arab Americans, this is how I define them. Anyone who traces their ancestry to an Arabic speaking country. But that doesn't necessarily resonate with everybody. So my objective definition may not be the ways in which somebody, like for example, um, an, Iraq, an Iraqi who has Chaldean religion may, may not identify as Arab. As a matter of fact, I, I, I remember being in graduate school and there was a young Chaldean American who, it was during the Gulf War, the first Gulf War in 1990, and he gave a heartfelt speech to the entire class about how he was not Arab, he was Chaldean. But from the definition that I just gave you, I would define him as Arab. Why? Because he comes from an Arabic-speaking country. So there is that tension, and I think um, what, what I've noticed in the research that I've done is that generations who are born here, second and third and fourth generation, are much more likely to embrace the Arab-American identity than are the more recent immigrants. Um, who are much more likely to be nationalistic or, or take the religion as, as the predominant identity. But I think there's a historical piece to that too, because then I think about the early Lebanese immigrants who may have um, um, uh, come from the Maronite uh, background. I, I know I have a couple of friends and they identify as being Phoenician, not Arab. But from my definition, they would be Arab. Why? Because they come from an Arabic speaking country. So this is a tension that I think we're, we're still dealing with. And, and part of, I mean, it's interesting because the whole Arab category is a very, uh, very American experience. As I said, it's, it's, it's our experience in the United States that makes, that, that holds a mirror up to us and says, this is who you are. And so that's why the second, third, and fourth generations end up adopting that term because it's, it's what we're told we are. So it's, it, and language is very important. And I, I want to apologize to you all. I wish I could have delivered this in Arabic. I'm trying really hard to learn Arabic, but it's not easy as an adult. How are you? Yeah, hi, how are you? Doctor? Good. Thank you for uh, thank you for excellent lecture. I really enjoyed it. Uh, we as Arab American, we are uh, finding discrimination, and we experience discrimination all over the world. The world work, um, our communities, etc. But one question I have is that do you find discrimination at the university level where it's highly high education against professors, against teachers, uh, against students? Uh, they don't get good marks, they don't get good positions, they don't have good managers, I mean they, they don't hire the right people at the university. Do you find this from your experience that this is true also at universities at the uh, uh, school of, um, you know, the high, high, high education level? That, let me tell you why that's such a difficult question to answer. Um, it's difficult to answer because um, usually we can, we can monitor those kinds of um, issues at the university because we keep statistics, right? We have categories of people and when someone reports discrimination or reports um, having some kind of hardship uh, that is based on their ethnicity, um, we can track it. But the issue is that I mentioned Arab Americans are considered white. So when an Arab American is at the university, either as an employee or as a student, um, whatever they, if they report some kind of issue, it gets coded as white. It doesn't get coded as Arab. So it's hard to know what their experiences are like. I mean, I can, I can. Um, reflect on anecdotally, but that doesn't really tell us what the extent of the issue or the extent of the problem. And this is why, you know, the, the examples that I gave you about young people reporting uh, being called names or being um, characterized as people, as someone who would carry a bomb and want to hurt someone, these are reports that are made to um, Arab ethnic organizations and they keep track of them. But how that Jives in a in a setting like a university is hard to say because we just don't have those data. 